morning, everybody. Hey, whoever pulled up in front of me has got my Van City Van Life sticker on the back window. Wicked. I love it when I wake up in the morning and I got subscribers sleeping around me. Always really cool. All right, guys, we are heading back to the ferry. It's time to go back to the island. I woke up this morning with all the supplies that I picked up yesterday, feeling a little bit trapped inside of my van. Man, this stuff was piled everywhere. <laughs> I just can't wait to get back to the shop, take it all out and get my home back. We're gonna get our morning coffee at the tiniest, littlest Tim Hortons. You think it's so small. Hi there. Good morning for Nanamo. Good morning for Nanamo, no reservation? No. I have a lot of things that I need to do this week. One of those things is to clean up my shop and put everything back in order because Lauren is coming back pretty soon and we get to take that ambulance out for its initial real test drive. I'm super stoked on that. Back at the shop, baby. We get to take all this stuff out of the vehicle. Are you excited? We finally get to take everything out of our home. <laughs> Crazy. My shop is so flipping <laughs> messy. Oh, that's one of the big projects that I have coming up here in the next week or so, is to organize this shop, build some cabinets, build some tables, because I'd like to put the miter saw on a rolling table over here. That way I can move it anywhere that I need it, just in case I need a longer table, I can rope. Anyway, guys, so much stuff. And a few weeks ago, I built this big old table for doing any grinding or metal work. I'd like to look into putting a metal top on here so I can do any welding and stuff like that um, right on the table itself. So my plan, I'm getting, I'm getting out of breath just thinking about how much work is in here. My plan is to put things in zones in here. So woodworking and general stuff will be here. I'd love to do a little zone over there for electrical, a little zone over here for welding and dirty work. Oh, guys, <laughs> so much to do as a solitary person. Anyway, today, I'm gonna put that thing in that thing. So I picked this up from eBay from a company called Autumn, Auto Custom Carpets, something like that it was on eBay. I just typed in Ford Econoline van vinyl floor and this came up. I actually bought this exact floor for my van many years ago it was a giant pain in the butt to install, but it turned out pretty good in the end and it's lasted and it's durable. So a project I did the other day without showing you is I added a second layer of that um, rubber insulating stuff. It's like a rubbery foam on the top. So I only had one layer before. Lauren suggested that I run a second layer. So I went and did that. I also cut it back a bit farther here because the initial one was going pretty close to where it was sealing and it pushed it down. So I brought this one back far enough because I don't want to take away from the doghouse sealing itself off from the engine area. One, I don't want water coming through and noise. Well, we can keep the noise and the heat contained in back there. But adding the second layer, listen to that. <laughs> this, this whole floor used to sound like a, used to go like this on the floor before and it would go boom. You could hear it radiating through the metal for like a minute. <laughs> awesome. So now that we have it all covered, I even covered up on the, um, on the step here. I didn't do that before. So the bottom has a half inch, yeah, a half inch of foam and these areas have a quarter inch. I did that side over there as well. Okay, let's cover that up. And I debated on throwing, throwing this foam in here. But I can do that, I can do that later. Anyway, I just wanna get the flooring in there. Oh, I'm not looking forward to this. This stuff's a pain in the butt. It's super thick, look at that. It's just, it doesn't, <laughs> yeah. Well, we should, we should clean that off first. There's definitely a lot of different options for doing the front floor in your vehicle. I've chosen to go with vinyl because it's easy to wipe off with all the backcountry that we go into, dragging mud in and out of the home all the time. 
You need something that's pretty easy to wipe down. That and I have a dog. I don't want to put carpeting in a vehicle with a dog. I'd spend the rest of my life picking dog hairs out of the carpet fibers. <laughs> no thanks. Even though carpet probably would go in a lot easier than this awkward, stiff thing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I got so annoyed today. Mess this thing is, man. As you can tell, they don't make this easy. You know, I, I just, I don't know why they just can't make a one that just drops right in. Why cannot they not make that cut exactly to the floor of this vehicle? These floors do not claim that they're a perfect fit. It does actually say that you will need to do some cutting. They don't notify you that it's this much cutting. There's so much material here. Ah, the hardest part about these projects are making the very first cut. The hard one I'm gonna have with this one is they have an indent here meant for that hump there. And I don't see that it lines up at all. Come on, how, how are you gonna? <laughs> Maybe this is a project I'm gonna have to leave for another day. I don't know if I contain the patience to do this because this side has that little hump too that one's pretty close to being aligned something i will do on this one that i never did on mine is i'll probably take the heat gun to this to make things kind of mold a bit better the last one i just chucked it in there and didn't care but here all these folds and stuff i might take the heat gun to it and see if i can level those things out it may make it a little easier to work there's the, uh, ah, there's the seat post. I'm scared to push it down. I'm scared that that's not gonna align with that hump and it doesn't look like it, but it looks like that one aligns with the hump. Why does one align? Look at that, right in line with the hump. That's perfect. This one looks like it's way off. As soon as I push this down and this goes through that hole, it's official. Yeah, it's probably a good time to cue that dramatic music. Not because it's needed. It's, this music's definitely unnecessary. But this is a dramatic moment for me. My heart starts to beat. I start to get worried because when you make that first cut, that's the one that's going to tell you if this project's going to work out or not. And I get nervous <laughs> every time. Okay, this is it. I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm sitting here laughing because... Because I'm sitting there hyping myself up to make this first cut. Oh, I'm so nervous. It's like you're not doing surgery, bro. <laughs> it's just so funny to watch this stuff. <laughs> Music is unnecessary, but hey, this is something I struggle with. That first cut is always hard to make. Yeah, oh, man. Slowly, man. This is going to take some serious time. Little cuts at a time and this stuff is starting to relax. So that's the key with this stuff is to just slowly start making a bit of cuts and then it starts to form a little better. I 
I drew a line on the outside here, but this is where if I cut too short, it could be a big mistake. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I think I'm gonna walk away from that side for now and start working on this side. I'm okay if I just get to the point where I just rough this in today. This is gonna test you for sure. Okay, I think I'm done for the day. And we're gonna let all this material just sit and relax a bit. At least I got the base of it in there. I might need to take some heat to this in this corner here. But yeah, I'm gonna let this sit for a little while let the material kind of like get comfortable at home <laughs> before we push it any farther. What I mean by that is I need to stop this project before I, I cut somebody. <laughs> surprise, surprise I haven't cut myself yet. Not bad though. So yeah, even this side is starting to pop up. I may need to take some heat to this thing. We're done for that. It's coming together though, little bits at a time. All right, we're gonna take to the internet here and see if we can find some swivel seats for my van. All right, Field Van. So this is the company that I bought the swivel seat for, for my van over there, but I bought it from them when these guys used to be Sportsmobile. So yeah, if you didn't know, the big Sportsmobile company, the big Ford Line conversion company is now called Field Van. And it looks like they still make the seat base. Ooh, I like this one though, man, this is nice. Let's order these. You know, they make them in passenger and also a driver. I like those seats too. <laughs> they have those seats. I'd like to reupholster the seats in mine and if I can make them look like that, I'd be pretty stoked. Oh, here we go, here we go. Craigslist, Ontario. Well, I dig those. So I need to get my seats reupholstered. So you gotta figure out the price of buying a nice set of seats like these versus getting mine reupholstered. Side mirrors. Look at that seat, my friends. Whoa. Now that is a luxurious looking seat. It's a really great part about having the time to build Oh, your dream home? You got time to really... Yeah, those are... Those are cool. Those are the seats that are currently in the ambulance now. And they need to be redone. The foam needs to be done. The seats are all ripped up. So they need to be reupholstered for sure. But that's what I'm working with right now. Whether I take these out and get these reupholstered, maybe the guy can create a bit more cushion on some of these areas here. Like maybe a bit more of a cushion here. Some different color in the middle. Bring some life to these old ones. I should take these in and have them see if there's a, an upholstery guy here on the island somewhere that can do those for me. All right, I'm on a website here called Richmond Auto Upholstery and um, they make everything I would need to kind of redo those seats. So we have seat foam for driver and passenger bottoms because those things have probably been sat on for over a million kilometers and never been repaired. So new seat bottoms just to give it, come on, you're gonna go that far, I wanna do the bottom of the seat foam. And then you got the armrests, the back pieces, and the seat bottoms come to 1425 bucks just to redo those seats. Then comes in this thought. Then you go to a company called Shop for Seats and they make those. Like they're made for RVs, they're captain's chairs, they're made out of leather. You can custom do the colors as you want and need and they start at 679 bucks. That's the whole seat. 
comes with a little wrap around bottom so you don't got to see the stuff that's underneath the seat you know and then you can customize it from here you can add seat heaters for 175 bucks you can add manual or powered lumbar support you can add a seven spring seat frame bottom which if i were to buy them i'd buy it because you know mine broke on that one you can get powered seat bases but yeah literally if you just go without anything just go with just that seat the way it sits with no additional lumbar supporter changes that entire seat total cost without any bases is 679 dollars so 20 on the bottom, 26 with the armrests. See on my van, it's gonna, it would hit on there. Well, that's a tight fit, man, I'm not sure. I'm thinking that they would fit. You know, gangster that would look in there with those big cushy seats. I'm thinking they would fit because a lot of RVs out there are built on the Ford Econoline chassis. And the Ford E450s, they're the same, I'm pretty sure, they're the same shell size. So the front cab should be the same on all those E250s, 350s, 450s, all this stuff that those RVs are built out of. That is super appealing. If you think about it, it's going to be cheaper to buy this seat than it is to buy replacement covers for that one. You know, I mean, my, my question is though, is because we do a lot of backcountry, we're in and out of it all the time. Those ideally are meant for an RV, which is recreational use. And my vehicle is my home, so it's everyday use. So I'm wondering if the longevity of some kind of an investment like that would be a bad idea. Anybody out there on here ever bought seats from shopforseats.com for their vehicle? If you have, please let me know what you think because I'd be very interested in, that's luxury. That would be amazing to drive around in. That would be amazing to road trip on. And when you're inside my home and those front seats are swiveled, whoo, <laughs> come on. That's an amazing set of seats in the front room of your home. Bro, the luxury you would have all snuggled up on that big old seat there, you'd probably wreck it in no time. That's another downfall too, because these here, you wouldn't be able to have the repairability like I would on that one. So even though those other seats would cost me about the same just to go get them done, at least if I destroy a seat back, I can go onto eBay or go onto that Richmond Auto website and buy a new seat back. It's repairable on my end by me. So recently we just finished doing the bottoms on these ones and they turned out really, really good. We did these seat backs over a year ago and they're pristine. They look absolutely perfect. But this is what I would do on the Ambo, just rebuy these. The prices have definitely gone way up since I bought my set. There's no flipping way I paid 1400 bucks for mine. And I even bought a new bottom seat foam for my van. Then the spring broke and then the foam, <laughs> foam broke. We'll have to fix that sometime soon, but this Ambo is fun. It gives me the chance to kind of dream about my new home and all the amazing luxuries that I can throw in it if I want to. Anyway, y'all, thanks for riding along with me today and being here throughout all my Ambo build madness and my decision making for my new home. <laughs> I'm so excited to take that thing for a drive. All right, guys, see you soon.